So when we get to particle physics starting on Thursday, I want to use this as an example of um, um, that example that led to a discovery of a new particle that we haven't talked about. Your textbook kind of mentions it out of sequence. So you, know, you can read your textbook if you want, but I'll pretend that I haven't seen that portion of the textbook. Um, but you know, this is what you see in a tritium's beta decay. You see tritium split, um, somehow uh, becoming helium-3 in the process emitting an electron, beta ray. So here's a question you can ask and answer. Uh, what would be the energy of this beta ray? And you, um, this, is, so this is something you can calculate from the information you can look up. And the information you can look up are the masses of the tritium and helium-3. So let me start out with that. Um, energy calculation in beta decay. Um, so I actually don't have those numbers, so let me look them up now. Um, I think Wolfram Alpha will give it to me the, in the best unit I want. Tritium mass. Does it tell me the mass yet? All right. Uh, I want it in 2.8. That doesn't sound close enough. Hmm. All right. I, I need it in a good enough precision. And I guess what I have is this. So let me use that. 5.008268. 5.008268. Eight two six eight five point zero zero eight two six eight eight two minus twenty seven kilogram in um, GeV per c. Uh, actually, let me do it in MeV per c squared. Maybe I could have done tritium mass in it. Okay, so that's the mass of the tritium. So mass of H three is um, 2809.432 MeV per C squared. And I need to know mass of the helium-3. I wonder if I could have just looked it up, do it this way. Um, helium-3 mass in that unit, possibly. Ah, there it is. Um, so mass of helium-3 is, oh, OK, I'm going to write it down, and I will explain one thing. 2809.414 MeV per C squared. Um, you see the small difference here, right? Small, very tiny difference in mass. Um, and that's where the energy released in the decay is coming from. But if you think about it too much, as in you think about the mass of the electron, which is 0 0.511 MeV per C squared, then this difference is not enough, right? And I've experienced this before, and this is why. When you look up tritium-3 mass, this is what they're giving you. They are giving you the mass of having, they are giving you the mass of this object. Something that has one proton, two neutrons in the center. And when you call something tritium, you are not just referring to the nucleus. You are also including the electron around it. So when you call something helium-3, you are not just referring to the nucleus of two protons and one neutron, you are also referring to the two electrons around it. So this mass that's given here, that kind of already includes the mass of the electron, 
so let me just uh, change these numbers a little bit so that I can do the calculation the way I want to. <laughs> so I'm going to say, um, so the nucleus of the tritium must be 2808921. So 8921. Then you, when you add this, you get back the original number, right? Yes? So th how do I explain this? Um, or what I'm writing down here, that's this number here. It's the, it's the, uh, it's tritium, tritium mass, which includes the mass of the electron inside the atom minus the electron mass in MeV per C squared. That's really what I'm writing down there because that's kind of the number I need to do calculation the way I want it as a nuclear reaction. So for math of the helium-3, I need to subtract off two of these. So it's uh, 1.022. So it will be 2808 .022. So 0 0.392. Or let me do it here. So this is the, um, the, just the mass in the nucleus. So once again, um, helium-3 mass minus this time two times electron mass. Because helium-3 has two electrons in it when you have a neutral atom. Oops, what did I do? Um, sorry, I don't know what it did. Yeah, so 2808.392, okay. So, okay, now we have all the proper numbers. So this is what you see. Um, when you have the masses on the left-hand side, that's this mass, and you add up the masses on the right-hand side, they don't add up to the same value. So the nuclear reaction is the first uh, example where the energy difference involved is big enough that those energy differences actually show up in the masses you would measure. So here's the now interesting question you can ask. What is the, what is the energy of electron emitted in the beta decay of tritium? How, how would you set up that calculation? How would you do it? Oh, we can do it. I guess um, to compare it to the commonly cited uh, numbers, you should say kinetic energy, because uh, you, you are right. Kinetic energy, would do, but I mean, if you want kinetic energy, the way you should do it is you should calculate the total energy and then subtract the rest energy. So how would you go about calculating the energy of electron? Uh, we have to be careful. So in the decay, does all the kinetic, all the extra energy, does all of it go into the electron? Let, let me just check your intuition. So Dimitri, I show you shaking your head. Why do you think not all of the energy goes into the electron? Uh, conservation. conservation of momentum, right? So if, uh, if you have tritium, that's going to, decay into um, helium-3 and an electron that's being emitted. Then if an electron is being emitted to one side, then helium-3 should be moving to the other side to make the uh, total momentum zero. Now, do you have some intuitive sense of which of these two will end up with more kinetic energy? Yeah, the electron will end up with the more kinetic energy. This is where if you are dealing with a non-relativistic case, you know, momentum goes as mv, and kinetic energy goes as one half mv squared. So two things having the same momentum, different amount of mass, the one with a smaller mass actually has more kinetic energy because it's a v squared. 
So that's the intuition you should have. So yes, electron will get most of the energy. And um, in fact, when you're dealing with the heavier atoms, electron actually might get practically all of the energy because the daughter nucleus will be so heavy that it doesn't get any energy. But you know, if this, uh, re so you call this recoil energy. If this recoil energy matters at all, it's going to matter in tritium decay, where your daughter nucleus is as small as it can possibly be. So let's do the calculation. I think I have just enough time to actually finish this calculation if I just go through it and not talk so much. So you do this calculation by starting with conservation of energy and momentum. Yes. Did I tell you that all the relativist stuff it's going to come back? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so here, actually, you know, uh, let's do it as a non-relativist calculation because I can kind of see from the amount of energy that's involved, that it's going to be a non-relativistic thing. So let's make it easy for ourselves. So non-relativistic calculation. We have energy conservation, and we have momentum conservation. So from conservation of energy, um, so I'm just going to write down something that kind of makes a sense to me. So I'm going to have uh, rest energy of tritium is equal to rest energy of helium-3 plus rest energy of electron plus the kinetic energies of the helium-3 and kinetic energy of the electron. So that would be uh, plus 1 half mass of helium-3 times velocity of helium-3 squared plus 1 half mass of the electron times velocity of electron squared. OK, conservation of momentum. So my initial momentum is 0. And my final momentum, let's say electron is going to the right. So it's a plus mass of the electron, velocity of the electron squared, minus the momentum of helium-3. Mass of helium-3 times velocity of helium-3 squared. Not squared, yeah. yeah. All right, so I have these two equations. And the rest energies, I can kind of combine them. It will be, so really the only thing I'm concerned with, let me try to save a little bit of time. I, if, when I combine this all into one term, then what I get is just the difference in the masses, which would be this minus this minus this. I don't want to do that in my head. Um, so wait, uh, add this. It's uh, 9, 0, 3. Oh, so the difference is not that big. It's uh, um, 0 0.018, 0 0.018 MeV. Um, for the rest energy, you really have to multiply it by C squared. So that's the difference in the rest energies. So this difference is equal to the kinetic energies. So 1 half m h 3 v h 3 squared plus 1 half m e v e squared. All right. Um, I guess we were interested in the electron energy. So the thing to do is to solve this for the helium velocity, plug it in eliminate it, and um, solve for the electron, um, um, combine, form, put them in a form so that it's expressed as electron kinetic energy. So I'm going to solve this. Sorry, I got only four minutes left. <laughs> I have this that I'm going to solve for the helium velocity because I'm trying to eliminate that. So my helium velocity is this divided by that, Me over MHE3 VE. Plug this in here. Then I end up with, let me do that in black, 
plugging this into there. I have this still on the left side, 0.018 MeV is equal to plugging this in and then squaring, I get um, one half Me squared times MH3 divided by MH3 times VE squared. Oops, sorry, this is squared. V squared plus one half MEV squared. I can do a little bit of algebraic simplification. Um, let me do this a bit of an odd substitution that's actually going to help me. I'm going to do this odd substitution, kinetic energy of E as 1 half MeV E squared. Then this is also kinetic energy of E. And I can actually find 1 half MeV E squared here, which means I get a factor of kinetic energy of E here. So which means I can factor out kinetic energy of electron. So here, all the remaining terms are a factor of Me. And um, actually, this cancels out a factor here. So divided by a factor of mass of helium, 3. I think that's everything there, right? Plus 1. So solving for kinetic energy of the electron is just this. The total available energy divided by this. So total, it's going to be something close to the to total available energy. Because this fraction will be a small, smaller than 1. So let's just to get a sense, to get the numerical sense. So um, helium-3 mass minus yeah, um, yeah. Well, technically, it's minus one electron mass, let, but let's uh, not bother with that. So helium-3, uh, wait, it's an uh, electron mass divided by helium-3 mass in um, OK. Um, Oh, wait, wait, that's not in the correct unit. It's a unitless quantity. Um, so the ratio is um, 2, well, so it, so this is the number, or approximately 2 times 10 to minus 4, or um, if you had used just the 1, as in if you had assumed that this was the correct energy, kinetic energy, then you would have been off by in um, uh, some, by that factor, <laughs> by 1.0002 or some number of zeros. So if we actually calculate it, it's, uh, um, if you actually calculate it, it's a 0 0.018. So, you know, so this actually doesn't have, have enough of precision for that factor to matter. But let's just pretend that it was and do that, 1 plus that. Then uh, whether you account for recoil energy or not, it would be a matter of, well, are you expecting energy of, how do I specify additional show details? Can't ignore it. There's more. Um, <laughs> let me. Um, let me do it this way. So, sorry, uh, Wolfram Alpha is not. So, 1.82 times 10 to minus 4. So, 0 0.018 divided by 1 plus 1.82 e minus 4. All right, so that's the actual number <laughs> that you was. So, it's a matter of is are you looking at this versus. 0 0.01799, okay, I need to write this down so that they are different. Now, here's the amazing thing. There are experiments where this difference counts. 
the accounting for the recoil energy of the, the resulting helium-3 actually matters. So, um, so, so this is the calculation we have. And from this, you would be led to believe that the energy of the electron coming out from this beta decay of tritium should be 0 0.018 or 18 uh, kilo electron volts. What we'll, what we'll go over either on Thursday or next week early is that that's actually not the case. When they actually do the experiment, they see a range of electron energies. And that's going to be a reason for discovery of a new particle that you have never heard about unless you are reading the textbook.